In this video, we'll sail on the NCL star to Svalbard, the northernmost continuously inhabited place in the world. But will I be able to see Russia? You may want to adjust your volume for this one because I'm going to leave the wind noises in it. That's because the wind and the weather is a big part of any trip to Svalbard. What you're seeing here is our arrival in Svalbard in early June. This particular video was taken at 4.30 in the morning. You can tell the sun doesn't go down at all in Svalbard in June. We had selected this Norwegian Cruise Lines cruise specifically for this destination, and I was going to be pretty upset if this port had been canceled. I totally understand that cancellations happen, and in fact we'd lost one port of call in Iceland, but this one was special. And here the challenging weather is a feature, not a bug. The views from the ship on sail in were fantastic. And for someone living in the mid-Atlantic of the United States, everything about this trip was designed to be disorienting. We were traveling through winter weather with winter landscapes in June, and the sun was always up. The star docked at this port, so we didn't have to worry about tenders. But we did have to hope that we'd packed correctly for windy winter weather. That morning, according to who you talked to, we either disembarked or debarked the ship and started our walk into the small town of Longyearbyen. Immediately I could tell this was a really interesting and really different place. Now technically Svalbard is a desert, that's why you don't see any trees. And the people that live here, and frankly the people that visit here, are pretty adventurous. I didn't mean that to sound like I was praising myself. But walking through the harbor toward the town, we could see signs that this was both a working port and a recreational one. We proceeded past the local brewery, more on that later, and we walked past the northernmost Circle K in the world. It's important to mark those superlatives, like being as cold as I was. And it's June, oh my goodness. To me, every direction I looked, there was something sort of fascinating. Oh, hey, look, it turns out there's a bus from the dock to the town, but it wasn't really necessary. Still, it's really good to know this option exists. For us, Svalbard had become a bucket list destination, and you can bet we were going to document it with photos. I really like this one. There was no snow, so I wasn't worried about spotting snowmobiles, and I spotted a whole bunch anyway. This is a major mode of transportation for much of the year. As you enter Svalbard, you see the interesting mix of residential and retail places. There are too many shops and restaurants for just the local population of about 2,000. We settled on Husky's Cafe for a morning coffee. And yes, there was a Husky, but he's retired. We found our seats right in the window and had a great view of the world passing by. This coffee shop was small and friendly, and like many places in Long Yerbien, you take your shoes off before you come in. You'll have no trouble remembering to put your shoes back on, and after we did, we continued our walk up the street. Svalbard, the northernmost continuously inhabited town in the world. This is a place where the ground stays frozen solid. It can't be buried here, and neither can the pipes necessary for heating. And by the way, no, your eyes aren't deceiving you, you're seeing snow. I reached what was pretty much the center of town and had a look all four directions.
we continued to walk up this small street with shops on either side. At this point, we'd seen restaurants, we'd seen coffee shops, we'd seen places to buy equipment for the outdoors. It was time to find some souvenirs. I stuck with a Christmas ornament and a few t-shirts, but if you wanted to, you could get some really beautiful artistic things here. After a quick stop for a beer at the Svall Bar, get it, get it, we started heading back to the ship. This is not the place to walk with your head down. You'll miss too much. Here's a fun little coincidence. We were on the Norwegian Star and the ship that's anchored there is the Viking Star. The walk back seemed shorter, but it didn't seem much warmer. It was still legitimately about 35 degrees. We went back aboard, had lunch, and prepared for our afternoon excursion. That excursion was a scenic cruise around Svalbard on a hybrid catamaran. Then it was time for our safety briefing for going out on the frigid waters. Life saving equipment, 50 sets over here, 50 sets on this side. We have uh, 15 over here for the kids and infants. You need to make this immersion suit look like a Dutch uh, wooden boots as well. Amazing. What you do, you just take this strap over your leg like this. That's quite the survival suit. And we were off. Many people tried to see the views from inside the ship itself, but I found it was best to go out to the back deck. We were told we might see wildlife up to and including a polar bear. Eh, we didn't, but that's okay. The views from the stern were still pretty amazing. And if you got cold, you could always come back in. It was one of the larger bears, uh, so probably... These folks had spotted a walrus. Yeah. Candidly, I didn't see it, but I did see another one. We sailed past an abandoned coal mining village. We did not go to Barentsburg, which is technically Russian. We continued to scan the shore for signs of wildlife. Okay, let's go back inside. Like over here, cat. Uh, you can Google him, write down Kesha. We returned to port, but instead of going straight back to the ship, I decided I wanted to go over to the local brewery. We arrived at 8.02. It closes at 8. It looks really good though, so remember that if you're ever in Svalbard. We decided not to wander around too much more, so we headed back to the ship. You can see the remnants of the old coal mining operation there at the top of the hill. I 
think my favorite picture of the entire trip was taken on that excursion. There was only a little more Svalbard adventure to go. Even though it was well after midnight, I decided I would stay up and watch for three things. The airport, the global seed vault, and then I was going to see if I could tell that I was actually looking at Russia. I definitely saw the airport and I think I saw the seed vault. I'm also pretty sure what I'm looking at out the window here is near Barentsburg. From the map, it appears I'm looking for an inlet. Okay, I tried. I'm not sure I ever did actually see it. Still, these are some pretty amazing 2 a.m. views, wouldn't you say? Back out to open sea, we headed for Nordcap in Norway. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and all that stuff, and you'll see me next time. Oh, so we're going to do this rough sea nonsense again? Oh boy.